You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on the Wheel of Time. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to The Philosopher's Notes on the Wheel of Time. The Shamans of Mexico, Their Thoughts About Life, Death, and the Universe by Carlos Castaneda. So Carlos Castaneda in his Toltec Warrior, powerful stuff. If you enjoy Don Miguel Ruiz, or agreements guy, then you've been exposed to some of the wisdom of the shamans of Mexico, and I think you'll dig Castaneda. If you're familiar with Castaneda, you'll really enjoy this note as we're going to focus on The Wheel of Time, a book that collects the most powerful thoughts from his variety of great books. We'll start with a quick look at Toltec wisdom and Carlos Castaneda himself, and then we'll explore his incredible big ideas. We'll start with the Toltec warrior. The Toltec warrior is an individual who is engaged in a battle for personal power, a person who views everything in life as a challenge, while striving to act with impeccability and to approach life's challenges with humility and courage. The ancient Toltec teachings inspire men and women to become warriors, taking the journey into self-discovery that will lead them to transcend social conditioning and follow their individual, noble path to the attainment of true power, freedom, and joy. Kind of like Dan Millman's Peaceful Warrior. I like it. All right, so quickly about Carlos Castaneda. Castaneda was an anthropologist from UCLA who, during the course of his research, introduced the world to both the Mexican philosophy known as Toltec, as well as his teacher, the Yaqui Indian shaman Don Juan. Castaneda chronicled his experience with Don Juan through a series of books. The first, The Teachings of Don Juan, A Yaqui Way of Knowledge, was actually his UCLA master's thesis, which introduced the world to Don Juan and quickly became a bestseller, while starting a fascination with the world of shamanism and the Toltec warrior. Although the veracity of some of his experiences, including the actual existence of Don Juan, is questioned, the profile of a Toltec warrior is no less meaningful. The lessons Castaneda shares are powerful and echo many of the truths revealed in other classic philosophies teaching us the art of living. So let's jump into the big ideas. We'll start with the path with heart. I quote, anything is one of a million paths. Therefore, a warrior must always keep in mind that a path is only a path. If he feels that he should not follow it, he must not stay with it under any conditions. His decision to keep on that path or to leave it must be free of fear or ambition. He must look at every path closely and deliberately. There is a question that a warrior has to ask mandatorily. Does this path have a heart? That's from the teachings of Don Juan. So I've read that passage dozens and dozens of times. I can vividly remember reading it out loud five plus years ago to a mentor of mine who was recruiting me to run his new venture. I was trying to explain to him that although the opportunity was fantastic, it just didn't feel right. I literally woke up in the middle of the night before our meeting and threw up. <laughs> I tend to have strong physical responses when I'm not on path. So how about you? Do you have any big things in your mind, any big decisions? Ask yourself this simple question. Does this path have a heart? Well, does it? Here's another quote from Castaneda, by, by the way, on the subject. He says, quote, But how will I know for sure whether a path has a heart or not? Anybody would know that, he says. The trouble is nobody asks the question. And when a man finally realizes that he has taken a path without heart, the path is ready to kill him. At that point, very few men can stop to deliberate and leave the path. The next big idea is learning game. Quote, once a man worries, he clings to anything out of desperation. And once he clings, he is bound to get exhausted or to exhaust whomever or whatever he is clinging to. A warrior hunter, on the other hand, knows he will lure game into his traps over and over again, so he doesn't worry. That's from Journey to Ixtlan. So remember the lesson of non-attachment from Buddhism and Hinduism? You can see my notes on the Dhammapada and the Bhagavad Gita. We talk about non-attachment. Same thing here. Are you clinging? Are you too attached to the results or outcomes in your life? Are you afraid that you might be in trouble if things don't work out on this particular project? 
relationship or whatever. Well, quit doing that. Don't cling. You have nothing to worry about. Knowing you will lure game into your traps over and over again. The next big idea is called the struggle. Quote, to be a warrior is not a simple matter of wishing to be one. It is rather an endless struggle that will go on to the very last moment of our lives. Nobody is born a warrior in exactly the same way that nobody is born an average man. We make ourselves into one or the other. That's from Tales of Power. So Socrates calls it the great combat, and Rumi calls it the inner jihad. Jesus has some thoughts on it, and Lao Tzu talks about the egomania of thinking you're going to reach total awareness without disciplined effort. All the great teachers preach the power of self-mastery. Here's a sampling of some of my favorite thoughts on the subject. Socrates from the Gorgias says, quote, I desire only to know the truth and to live as well as I can. And to the utmost of my power, I exhort all other men to do the same. I exhort you also to take part in the great combat, which is the combat of life and greater than every other earthly conflict. Rumi says, the lion who breaks the enemy's ranks is a minor hero compared to the lion who overcomes himself. Jesus says, he who rules his spirit has won a greater victory than the taking of a city. Lao Tzu says, he who controls others may be powerful, but he who has mastered himself is mightier still. And he also says, don't think you can attain total awareness and whole enlightenment without proper discipline and practice. This is egomania. Appropriate rituals channel your emotions and life energy toward the light. Without the discipline to practice them, you will tumble constantly backward in the darkness. So how are you doing with self-mastery? Are you embracing the challenge of it or letting yourself tumble constantly backward into the darkness because you haven't created the rituals and the commitment to truly hone your consciousness? Hope the answer is the, uh, the positive side of that. But what's one thing that's leaking your power right now that you know you need to stop doing? Okay, quit doing that starting now. Seriously, what's one thing that you just know you need to stop doing? It's not consistent with your highest self. Stop doing it. And what's one thing you know your highest self needs to start doing today that'll build your power? Nice. Go out and rock that habit as well. All right, the next big idea is the warrior's perception. Quote, the trick is in what one emphasizes. We either make ourselves miserable or we make ourselves strong. The amount of work is the same. That's also from Journey to Ixtlan. And that's brilliant. So uh, what are you emphasizing? Are there any better alternatives? So Tony Robbins has a great exercise in his personal power CDs. Brilliant stuff. Uh, it was one of my first introductions to self-development. I remember being up at 2 a.m., maybe 10 plus years ago, feeling not so great about myself. And I happened to see Tony going off on one of his infomercials as I channel surfed. That was before I got rid of my TV. And uh, I reluctantly and almost embarrassingly bought his stuff and hid it in my closet so my roommates wouldn't know about it. <laughs> Funny stuff. The times have changed. Um, in his personal power program, Tony has you focus on everything that's brown in your room or wherever you happen to be. Brown, 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 brown. So go ahead and give it a try. Look around you right now and see if you can find all the things that are brown. Do it for 30 seconds or so, right? So if you're listening to this, press pause and go out and seek out. Look at everything that's brown. Brown, 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 brown. All right, did you do it? Good, I hope so. Okay, so now what is blue in your immediate surroundings right now? Ha, ah, you have no clue because you're spending all your time looking for stuff that's poo brown. Quit doing that. As Castaneda says, the effort is the same. Just choose to look for the things you actually want to see. Look for the good and that's what you'll see. Simple and really powerful. And remember, we either make ourselves miserable or we make ourselves strong. The amount of work is the same and the trick is in what we emphasize. So look for the good stuff. Emphasize the good stuff. 
The next big idea is blink of an eye. Quote, we hardly ever realize that we can cut anything out of our lives anytime in the blink of an eye. That's also from Journey to Ixtlan. It's powerful. So are you complaining about something incessantly in your life? Maybe the traffic, the job you hate, possibly the relationship that isn't working? Well, just know that you could cut any and all of that out of your life now. You could work different hours, move to a new city, or work from home. You could walk into the office tomorrow morning and quit. You could end the relationship or change the relationship. You can, in the blink of an eye, cut any and everything out of your life. Of course, you may or may not choose to do this, but the moment you operate from this perspective, you take your power back. And remember, warriors don't complain. They take action to change their situation or change their perception of the situation. How about you? All right, how about death as an advisor? Quote, death is our eternal companion. It is always to our left, an arm's length behind us. Death is the only wise advisor that a warrior has. Whenever he feels that everything is going wrong and he's about to be annihilated, he can turn to his death and ask if it is so. His death will tell him that he is wrong, that nothing really matters outside its touch. His death will tell him, I haven't touched you yet. Ah, that's powerful. That's another quote from Journey to Ixtlan. So imagine death as your advisor, a constant companion always to your left, an arm's length behind you. And the next time you get stressed or irritated or whatever, pause for a moment. Look back to your left. You'll see death smiling and waving at you, reminding you that outside of his touch, you have nothing to worry about. Another one of my favorite teachers, a guy named Seneca, who was a first century Roman Stoic philosopher born around the time of Jesus, he talks a lot about using death as an advisor as well. You can see the notes on his letters from a Stoic for a full review and enjoy these thoughts here. He says, quote, rehearse death. To say this is to tell a person to rehearse his freedom. A person who has learned how to die has unlearned how to be a slave. He is above or at any rate beyond the reach of all political powers. And he also says, quote, you want to live, but do you know how to live? You are so scared of dying and tell me, is the kind of life you lead really any different from being dead? And he says, as it is with a play, so it is with life. What matters is not how long the acting lasts, but how good it is. A couple more. He says, refuse to let the thought of death bother you. Nothing is grim when we have escaped that fear. And finally, every day, therefore, should be regulated as if it were the one that brings up the rear, the one that rounds out and completes our lives. So death is our constant advisor. Let's live as if this moment may be our last and refuse to have our last act be anything but the best we're capable of. How about this big idea, chatter in our heads? This quote is from a book called A Separate Reality. Castaneda says, We talk to ourselves incessantly about our world. In fact, we maintain our world with our internal talk. And whenever we finish talking to ourselves about ourselves and our world, the world is always as it should be. We renew it, we rekindle it with life, we uphold it with our internal talk. Not only that, but we also choose our paths as we talk to ourselves. Thus, we repeat the same choices over and over until the day we die, because we keep on repeating the same internal talk over and over until the day we die. A warrior is aware of this and strives to stop his internal talk. So how is that internal dialogue of yours working out for you? Are you repeating the same thing to yourself over and over and over again? Time to take control. Buddhists like to say your meandering mind is like a monkey swinging from tree to tree. An especially overactive monkey mind? That mind is like a drunk monkey swinging from tree to tree after being bitten by a scorpion. <laughs> it's a great image. So how's your mind? Out of control or balanced? Get it balanced. Control your internal dialogue. Become equanimous. Did you know the word equanimity, one of my favorite words, comes from the Latin words aqueous and magnus, literally meaning equal or balanced mind, equanimity. 
Pretty cool, huh? All right, another quote on internal dialogue. Castaneda says, The internal dialogue is what grounds people in the daily world. The world is such and such or so and so only because we talk to ourselves about its being such and such and so and so. The passageway into the world of shamans opens up after the warrior has learned to shut off his internal dialogue. Here's a great big idea on personal history. Quote, personal history must be constantly renewed by telling parents, relatives, and friends everything one does. On the other hand, for the warrior who has no personal history, no explanations are needed. Nobody is angry or disillusioned with his acts. And above all, no one pins him down with their thoughts and their expectations. Personal history. It's a huge part of Castaneda's teachings. One of the basic aspects of the Toltec warrior is the process of transcending, cutting off, destroying our personal history. Think of your personal history as an anchor you have tied to your waist, a big one. It's heavy. It slows you down. It's all the things you've done in the past, good and bad, that have created a world of expectations around you. If you let it, this will stifle your evolution and creativity faster than anything. As Castaneda advises, let it go. Quit putting yourself in a little box by trying to live consistently with your past and explaining every little action you take. Be you, fully, in this moment, independent of what others may or may not expect from you. Castaneda also says, quote, It doesn't matter how one was brought up. What determines the way one does anything is personal power. The next idea is impeccability. Quote, a warrior must learn to make every act count, since he is going to be here in this world for only a short while. In fact, too short for witnessing all the marvels of it. Impeccability. The word literally means without sin, where sin means to miss the mark. Think missing a target in archery. So, to be impeccable means to hit the mark, to be on target, to live your ideals. The Toltec warrior is impeccable. In my philosophy, there are two primary ingredients, both with roots in Toltec, actually. One, intention. We must know who we are, what we stand for, and what we will give to the world. That's your intention. Two, impeccability. We need to do what needs to be done. Without consistent, impeccable execution, all the best intentions will be meaningless. So who has the clearest intention and the strongest impeccability? It's the people you admire the most. Tiger Woods comes to mind for me, or Barack Obama, or Oprah. These amazing people have remarkably clear intentions and equally powerful impeccability. So how is your intention, your impeccability? What can you do to optimize each? All right, the next big idea, actually the final big idea, is no stress success. Quote, if a warrior is to succeed at anything... The success must come gently, with a great deal of effort, but with no stress or obsession. I love that. With a great deal of effort, but with no stress or obsession. So we usually wind up on one extreme or the other. We're either really goal-driven and obsessed and stressed, or we're on a beach somewhere or in meditation trying to breathe, relax ourselves out of the stress through non-action. The challenge, of course, is to be fully engaged and totally calm. Fun challenge. Lao Tzu and the Taoists call this effortless effort. It's not no effort, it's effortless effort. It's like water moving downstream, incredibly active and powerful, but without stress. It's simply moving with its built-in purpose, heading downstream. Deepak has a great line about this from Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. You can check out the notes on that. He says, quote, one pointed intention means holding your attention to the intended outcome with such unbending purpose that you absolutely refuse to allow obstacles to consume and dissipate the focused quality of your attention. There is a total and complete exclusion of all obstacles from your consciousness. You are able to maintain an unshakable serenity while being committed to your goal with intense passion. I love that. I call it dynamic equanimity that place where you're totally engaged and totally balanced. So how are you showing up? Are you stressed or are you flowing? Are you totally disengaged and timid about setting exciting goals? 
because you don't want to become imbalanced? Or are you having fun finding your center while playing at the edge? Make it a game. Play full out. Put in a great deal of effort and let go of your attachment to the results and just let it flow. So here's to bringing out the Toltec warrior within as we live with more personal power, impeccability, and fearlessness. So that's a quick look at The Wheel of Time by Carlos Castaneda, who, as I said, was an anthropologist from UCLA. And during his research, he uh, introduced the world to both the Mexican philosophy known as Toltec, as well as his teacher, Don Juan. He chronicled his experience in a series of books, and the first one, The Teachings of Don Juan, A Yaqui Way of Knowledge, was actually his UCLA's master's thesis, which introduced the world to Don Juan and quickly became a bestseller while starting a fascination with the world of shamanism and the Toltec warrior. So if you like this note, I think you'll also like The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand, the notes on that one, and Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, and Abraham Maslow's Motivation and Personality. Now we'll take a quick look at some of the quotes from the sidebar, and you can look on the uh, in the note to find the source of these quotes. They're all going to be Carlos Castaneda. He says, A warrior must cultivate the feeling that he has everything needed for the extravagant journey that is his life. What counts for a warrior is being alive. Life in itself is sufficient, self-explanatory and complete. Therefore, one may say without being presumptuous that the experience of experiences is being alive. Beautiful. Castaneda says, a warrior seeks to act rather than talk. And he says, a warrior is a hunter. He calculates everything. That's control. Once his calculations are over, he acts. He lets go. That's abandon. A warrior is not a leaf at the mercy of the wind. No one can push him. No one can make him do things against himself or against his better judgment. A warrior is tuned to survive, and he survives in the best of all possible fashions. Only the idea of death makes a warrior sufficiently detached so that he is capable of abandoning himself to anything. He knows his death is stalking him and won't give him time to cling to anything, so he tries without craving all of everything. The spirit of a warrior is not geared to indulging and complaining, nor is it geared to winning or losing. The spirit of a warrior is geared only to struggle, and every struggle is a warrior's last battle on earth. Thus, the outcome matters very little to him. In his last battle on earth, a warrior lets his spirit flow free and clear. And as he wages his battle, knowing that his intent is impeccable, a warrior laughs and laughs. The warrior, silent in his struggle, undetainable because he has nothing to lose, functional and efficacious because he has everything to gain. The world is incomprehensible. We won't ever understand it. We won't ever unravel its secrets. Thus, we must treat the world as it is, a sheer mystery. Whenever a warrior decides to do something, he must go all the way, but he must take responsibility for what he does. No matter what he does, he must first know why he is doing it, and then he must proceed with his actions without having doubts or remorse about them. The hardest thing in the world is to assume the mood of a warrior. It is of no use to be sad and complain and feel justified in doing so, believing that someone is always doing something to us. Nobody is doing anything to anybody, much less to a warrior. If his spirit is distorted... He should simply fix it, purge it, make it perfect, because there is no other task in our entire lives which is more worthwhile. To seek the perfection of the warrior spirit is the only task worthy of our temporariness. So there we go. That's a quick look at The Wheel of Time by Carlos Castaneda. It's a great place to start your journey into uh, Castaneda's work, and you can kind of figure out which one of the books you want to explore next based on the passages from the different books. And again, I reference the quotes from the different books to help you figure out where you want to head next with Castaneda, if you're feeling it, in the notes. So check it out, print it out, and I uh, hope you enjoyed. And looking forward to sharing more with you soon. Have an awesome day. See ya. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. 
please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.